Go and make disciples of all nations. This is our mission. What's up, y'all? And welcome to the Mission Driven Podcast. This podcast is designed to assist you in discovering and living God's mission for your life. What's up? It's Joe Melendrez, and I'm so thankful that you're tuned in to episode 13. Our theme today is fearless. I don't know about y'all, but I think we are in an interesting season of life. This podcast is being recorded during the season of Lent, also during the season of the coronavirus. This virus is no joke. It's crazy how it's affecting the entire world. I was just uh, on a phone call with my friend Marie from Germany. Then I got a WhatsApp from my friend Father Raj in India. And then my friend Rose from Australia reached out on Instagram. And everyone is quarantined, but connected. Oh man, I did a Bible study last night via Zoom. It was different, but still powerful that we have technology to keep us connected. Instead of calling people right now, I'm just FaceTiming them. I want to see people. It's kind of wild how this is happening during Lent, a season of fasting and prayer. We essentially are fasting from our normal lives and from interactions with people on a daily basis. But you know, it's just a season. Yes, it will have an impact globally, but it too shall pass. We will move forward. So I want to encourage you today, keep your mind and heart fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You know, each episode, I'd like to offer a mission tip to help give you some fuel on your mission. Today's mission tip is brought to you by the Be Not Afraid Conference. This conference is happening right now. It was started by my friend Stacy Summero, a Catholic speaker and performer, and the Holy Spirit told her to start an online conference right at the beginning of the quarantine season. Within one week, she launched an online conference that features over 30 speakers, plus 10,000 people have already signed up for the conference and is designed to minister to us right now at home while we're chilling on our couch. I'll be sharing a talk and even possibly sharing a workout. So feel free to sign up at stacysumrow.com. There will be a link in the show description. Oh, did I mention it's completely free? Okay, today's mission tip is help is on the way. Yesterday, I was going on a walk and I had a revelation. So many times we see people, but we don't know what they're going through. And in this case, we have a global common bond of hardship. We do know what others are going through if they're being affected in some way, shape or form by this virus. So in a sense, right now, we're more connected through our struggle Than we are our differences. It says in Romans 8.28, For we know all things work together for good, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. God will use this for good. We don't know what that looks like, but that's not our job. Our job is to stick to the mission. Be Christ for others. Make disciples. Develop our relationship with Jesus. Live in the calling that God has for us. We need to let go of what is already in God's hands. Check out this verse from Isaiah 41, 13. It says, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. Wow. Do not fear. I will help you. I want to remind you today that help is on the way. While reading this verse, I had this vision of a child holding on to the hand of their parent. The parent will lead them, keep them safe, and help them where they cannot help themselves. Jesus, thank you for reminding us not to fear because help is on the way. Okay, wherever you are in the world, thanks for tuning in to the Mission Driven Podcast. Next up is Word of the Day featuring my wife, Noel Melendrez, then a special interview with our mission-driven guest, Hannah Schaefer, plus an exclusive 
Break It Down with Hannah, where we talk about her new album, Who I Am. It just dropped. You got to check it out. Don't go anywhere. No, for real. Stay at home and enjoy the Mission Driven Podcast. Let's go. All right, welcome back to the Mission Driven Podcast. This is Word of the Day with Noelle Melendrez, my wife. And uh, in a couple of weeks, she's going to give birth to a baby. Praise the Lord. How are you feeling right now? Uh, you know, I'm feeling <laughs> it. We're rounding the stretch, so. Yeah, we're almost there. And uh, we're excited for new life in this interesting season. Definitely an interesting season. Of COVID-19. Right. But uh, God's going to make a, a new thing happen, um, I believe, in the entire world and definitely in our family. Amen. So uh, we're, we're excited today. Our theme is fearless. So fitting. Very appropriate. Very appropriate. And uh, we're going to be reading from Isaiah. I was uh, reflecting this morning in uh, my daily meditation called Jesus Calling, and this scripture passage jumped out at me. It's Isaiah 12, 2. Noel, you mind reading it? Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Mm, That's so, so good. So we're going to break it down via the SOAP method, which stands for scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Observation, kind of rewriting it in our own words, what, how we interpret this, uh, I'll start off with mine and then Noel's going to share hers. I said, um, it's obvious God is my salvation. I said, surely God is my salvation. Um, then I said, I will commit to trusting in him instead of being afraid. I think the I will, it's different than the I, I'll try, you know, I might, I will is a commitment. When I make goals and stuff, I usually like to put I will statements. I will do this. I will accomplish this. I will whatever it is I'm, I'm working towards. So I will trust God and not be afraid. I love that. And I said, Jesus, for real, Jesus is my strength and my defense. He protects me. He defends me. He strengthens me. He saves me all around. And for this reason, he's my salvation. Like he is the, the golden ticket. He's the key to true salvation, to truly being saved. We, we hear the word salvation being thrown around a lot. But to really think about being saved all around. So from whatever my circumstances, from my enemies, from re- toxic relationships, from my own sins, there's so many uh, things that we have to get saved from. Yeah, so that, that was my observation. Yeah, similarly, I put our only salvation is from God through our faith in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of how you were saying that Jesus is our salvation. And it's the only way that we can really calm our anxieties. Yeah. Like our fears. That's what it says. I will trust and not be afraid. But you have to trust, right? You have to put your faith and trust in Christ if you want that peace. It doesn't mean, you know, you'll feel it all the time, every day, at every moment. But when we refocus ourselves on Christ, really, that's the only outlet. Yeah. It's a it's a must situation. And I, I also think that with what you're saying with trust, you can't be like half in and half out. No, it's like you can't do that in a relationship. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't do that in our marriage. Yeah, we half trust each other, mm-hmm. or, or else it would, you know, collapse, or it wouldn't have a strong foundation, and we wouldn't be able to move forward really, or grow, or there would be a lot of problems that could easily seep in. But I think that happens a lot in our relationship with God. Whereas on good days, we'll say, "Jesus, I trust in you." But on bad days, we forget that. I think that's where your maturity in your faith really starts to show. I feel like the more I've grown in my faith, the easier it's become to trust him in the difficult times. Not to say that, you know, you don't still worry or have any like human emotion about your situation, Mm -hmm. like whether it's sadness or anger. But if you can still in the midst of that say, I trust that know that God's going to get me through this or that God has a plan in this or he's in control he's in control right and I think that's again it's comes more with maturity and experience and especially in the more you know God's word yeah yeah totally and that's that's the daily reminder I feel like God's word 
is, is super important, especially right now when uh, church buildings are being closed. And I think there's a lot of, I want to say spiritual panic because it's out of routine, you know, hey, I don't know where to go, but we can create church at home, you know, where two or three gather, Christ is in our presence, and that's so important, but we can take this time to really create our own scripture studies, Bible studies, to to be nourished by by God's word, which is what we're doing right now. Praise God, word of the day. Um, we're going to move into application. So this is how it applies to our lives. And similar to what um, you've been covering, I said, trust in God is something that I need to remind myself to do constantly. Mm-hmm. I need to stop focusing on how bad the current situation is or could be and instead believe Jesus is who he says he is. I need to declare it every day, Jesus, I trust in you. If I really believe he is the savior of the world, that he conquered death, that he made the dead rise, he, anyone who, who he came in contact with, who wanted to be healed, were healed. Like this is his track record. This is what he does. He specializes in the impossible and I need to trust in him and really believe that this is, if this is who he is, that he's got this, then it's, it's going to be okay. Well, and to kind of go off of that, we have to also remind ourselves that God never said that it was going to be easy. Mm -mm. He never said we wouldn't be without pain or Mm -mm. loss or hardship or sickness. We live in a fallen world. We do. And that's the reality. And Christ says that. Um, but he does promise that he will always be with us in the midst of it all, that he won't abandon us, that we won't be alone. So it's not to say that, you know, being a Christian means you get a, you know, free pass. Mm -mm. You know, if we read scripture, we know, just look at Paul and his life, Yeah, how much he suffered and how much he rejoiced in his suffering. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you realize that it's an honor to suffer for God. And it's like, I mean, it's really amazing to think about it. I mean, I don't know very many people who are able to rejoice in the suffering when they're going through it. You know, that is that is really just amazing faith. And the fact that Paul was able to do that it really speaks to how Christ really transformed him Big in time. his life. Big time. And, you know, but that's a good reminder to us that, you know, again, no one said it was going to be easy. Yeah. Pick up your cross. Right. Follow me. And I mean, this is a crazy time, but, you know, what are you doing to keep your strength? You know, are you in the word daily? Are Mm. you praying? Mm. Are you fellowshipping with people? Even if it's, you know, via Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever it is, keep yourself focused with your social distancing, of course. Yes. Uh, But to, you know, to keep your, your head in God's word. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really important because it can be really easy to get stir crazy. And, you know, um, the thing that I think is really important is is to remind ourselves, like I wear a bracelet that says WWJD, you know, remind myself of what would Jesus do? Or it's like we have different ways. Some people get tattoos. You know, some people wear clothes. It's like it's like because of our sinful nature that we forget, we have to rewire ourselves. But right now in you know being quarantined and being away from people we're fasting from interactions with people you know we're fasting from a lot of different things we're still blessed in the situation but a lot in our mind could be like this could go wrong this could go wrong this could go wrong but i'm going to remind myself right now that jesus i trust in you that you're my defense that you're my strength that you will protect me and i am here with you and you are with me so let us be encouraged during the season um so thankful for Isaiah and um, this awesome scripture passage. Let's go ahead and conclude with prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, you know us, you know our circumstances. You are not surprised that we are in this interesting season of life globally. Lord, we ask that we can trust in you more than we've ever trusted before. Lord, we know that you're going to supply our every need. We know that we might uh, have a, a rocky season, uh, a valley that seems like it's not easy. But Lord, we ask that we can grow closer to you during this time, that we can let go of things that really don't matter and cherish the things that really do matter. 
we're praying for defense, for you to be our defense, for you to truly save us from wherever we are. Lord, we're praying that this virus, that you may use it for good and that people all over the world may know you, may know your name, may dedicate their lives to you and build a relationship with you. Lord, we're so thankful that we can trust in you every day. We have that opportunity. We're so thankful that you have chosen us to be your children, to serve you, to love you, that you care, that you want to talk to us, you want to be with us. And Lord, we just we just ask for guidance, for clarity, and for a sound mind during this time that we may truly be fearless and trust in you. And we just ask that you continue to inspire us and guide us, help us to make healthy choices, help us to stay in your word, Lord, and just focus on what's really important right now. Um, we lift this all up to you in your son's name. We pray. Amen. Amen. That was word of the day. Isaiah 12 two. our theme today is fearless mission driven podcast. Let's go. Today's mission driven interview is a rising female role model and compelling contemporary Christian artist in the Catholic Church. She is a passionate speaker and a multi international award winning singer and songwriter. She has opened for renowned Christian artists such as Matt Marr, Matthew West, Father Rob Galea, Building 429, and Mac Powell. She has toured internationally, playing over 500 shows across the United States. But check this out. Her songs have over 400,000 streams worldwide. She's going to be talking to us today about her latest album called Who I Am. Please give a big mission-driven welcome to Hannah Schaefer. Welcome to the program, Hannah. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing so well. So happy to be here. So just so uh, we can set the scene, uh, I'm broadcasting from Simi Valley, California, and you are currently located in Indianapolis, Indiana. But we have the technology today to make this happen and bring this show to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So uh, when reaching out to you, um, I, I said, what do you want the theme to be? And you said, you know, embracing your identity in Christ fearlessly. So I decided to, to title this podcast interview with you, Fearless. So what, what brought you to um, come up with that, that theme? What, what was leading you in, in embracing your identity in Christ fearlessly? Wow. Well, I think that that has been an overall theme for me uh, in these past couple of years in my music in realizing, you know, the person that God has called me to be as, as a, as a woman, um, a Christian woman, as a newlywed. And uh, just, just really diving into the root of what it means to be a follower of Christ, what it means to live with Christ in your heart and allowing him to just come in every, to be a part of every single thing in your life. It's just been kind of crazy, a crazy journey of rediscovering the yeah. self and how Jesus has and plays an important role in that space. Well, I think what you're talking about everybody goes through. Um, sometimes people yeah. go through it at a younger age. Sometimes adults go through it at an older age. It doesn't matter. It's all part of the journey. And um, I love it, especially during this interesting season in our world today. It's, it's important that we are fearless and we are counting on God and really relying on him, not only to provide our every need, but that he's with us through the fire and through any difficult situations. Um, I was listening today to a podcast and you know, it says, uh, although I walk, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death through the valley, mm -hmm. not around or over, but it, we, we walk through the valley, but God's with mm -hmm. us through that, you know, so it's important right now to be fearless. And you mentioned that, you know, your, your journey of faith, you're, you're very young. Um, and I believe you've been recording music, um, since you've been 13 or 14 years old. Is that correct? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, writing since then and then recording a little bit older, but wow. <laughs> so t tell us a little bit about, um, your faith journey. Um, what's led you to have the faith that you do today? Where did it all start? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so my mom, 
I'll start there. My mom always, I asked her, because I kind of asked her when I was younger. I'm like, you know, did I ever have this, this moment where I was younger, uh, where I didn't believe or just, just was curious about the faith. And, and my mom had always told me that I just believed that Jesus was my best friend. Wow. And uh, I mean, I distinctly even remember, uh, I was probably like six or five or six years old. I would draw pictures on a piece of paper and like let and throw them into the wind, believing that like I was sending a letter to Jesus. Oh man, I love that. And, and like, like as a child, I just had such a great faith. And I think that that, that was a, that was the source of my joy really gr- growing up and just, just understanding that God was with me. God was with me. Like Jesus was my friend. And, and I believe that. Uh, I think my, my faith life, I, I don't think it ever was really shaken to the mm-hmm. point of disbelief. I, I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I, I didn't have doubt, but my, my coming to Jesus moment, my, the moment where I, I just fell head over heels in love with him. I was 14 years old, 13, 14 years old, you know, as a young a young kid just trying to fit in, trying to understand, you know, okay, why, like, why do these people not like me? Or mm-hmm. like, and then you, you're you trying to make friends. And um, I experienced some just bullying. And I went through the state of, of depression, a little bit of depression there, and just really feeling so lonely, just so lonely, because I, I couldn't understand why if, if I was living a life that in, in the eyes of God is like, you know, right and just, I was trying so hard to do the right thing yeah. as, as a young teenager, as a, a freshman in high school, I was trying so hard to just listen to what Jesus said to do. And, and I just couldn't understand why the world rejected himself and in turn, why the world was rejecting me. Mm. Mm. And that was a very painful time of my life because I was not only trying to understand why some of my closest friends were turning on me or, you know, like just people that I had been close with. It was like, it was like my whole world flipped upside down in, in the span of a couple of (laughs) days. And then I just, I was still only, you know, 13, 14 years old and just starting to understand what it's like to be a teenager. Yeah. It's, It's just, it was a, it was a really hard time for me. Um, but it was then in that moment and in those nights where all I could do is just cry in my pillow, feeling so alone Mm. that I knew Jesus was there. That like, if, if there was one person, it, there, it was Jesus. He, he was there. And I remember one night I was praying so fervently and just, and obvious, a lot of times, like, you know, whenever I had time to talk to Jesus. I would talk to him throughout the day in, you know, in between classes when I was getting, you know, anxious or nervous or just felt like scared, lonely, like all all these things. But it was mainly the conversations when I was alone at night before I I tried to fall asleep. I would really just pour out my heart to him. And I just really remember a moment where I I just was, was crying. I'm like, Jesus, I don't understand. Like, where are you? You know, why have you like, have you forsaken me? And I just felt this weight on the, the end of my bed as if really? someone just sat down on my bed. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then it, I had this overwhelming sense of peace. Wow. And wow. like, I'm like staring up think, thinking about this moment. <laughs> I haven't, oh, wow. It was in that season that I truly fell in love with our Lord and our Savior and realized that he really wasn't going to leave me alone and he wouldn't leave anyone alone, you know? Yeah, man. You know, I'm so many beautiful things about that story because a lot of us will go through that where our friends will change. Um, we might feel down, we might feel depressed, we might feel alone, but your encounter with Christ that night through praying as, you know, a 13 or 14 year old and, and feeling that peace. And, and that's, that's Jesus. I was reading yesterday that, that, Christ comes to bring peace, not confusion. You know, he brings peace that, Mm -hmm. that supersedes all understanding only peace that he can provide. But that's like, that's a sure sign it's from God. So how beautiful Mm -hmm. and special. And the thing that's so cool about that is 
you can't forget that. You can't, you know, wipe that from your memory. It's it's a powerful moment that potentially it almost sealed your destiny in Christ of like, hey, I'm going in this direction towards you, Jesus, and I want to share share you, share this peace, share this love with with the world. Um mm. So when did you decide to start sharing your faith through music? Wow. It really wasn't too long after that. I knew I, I, ever since I was very little, I, I wanted to sing. And I had been in anything musical possible growing up. But I think when I was 15 or 16 years old, I um, really just was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I, I, I'm not a very organized person, so I was trying so hard to get ahead of myself mm, okay. and make sure that whatever I was going to do after high school, I, I, was, I was already in, headed towards that direction. Okay. And so after a lot of, of thought and prayer, I just thought, okay, what are the things I love the most? Mm. And the top two things were Jesus and music. Wow. And I didn't really grow up listening to Christian music. I grew up listening to my dad's 80s music mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and really uh, just any CDs in the car that my mom liked to listen to. I wasn't really exposed to radio until I was in middle school. And when I was exposed to radio, it was more so like pop, pop music, right. like Lady Gaga, yeah. Carrie's Teenage Dream, like all of, all of that, that era. Mm -hmm. And I loved pop music. I loved pop music. There was just something really special about the, um, the, the sounds, the sounds were just so different. It was, uh, the, the synths were beautiful. The, the, the lyrics were just pretty straightforward, but at the same time, um, in, intricate and well woven. And I just, remember that was when I truly fell in love with pop music. And so as I was getting older and I was in high school, uh, an opportunity came up where I could start really, truly focusing on buckling down and writing Christian music. And so I did at, at 13, 14 years old, when I was feeling broken and feeling in despair, I turned to music. I mean, mm. music was was besides, you know, G, like praying to Jesus, music was the only thing I had left. Wow. That's what it felt, it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so that's, that's what I did. I started writing songs and every song that I wrote about was a faith-based song. Wow. Do you remember the first song you wrote? Oh man. Uh, sort of. Yeah. It, I think the first, the very first song I, I wrote and actually I performed it too at, at the school. It was called The Answer. And and it was like, God, will you show me the answer, God? I've been waiting forever. Like, I really just wow. wanted him to tell me. I wanted him to tell me what my purpose was. Wow. Because all I wanted was to give my life to him and be like, you know what, Lord? You're the only one who accepts me. You're the only one that, that loves me unconditionally. And that's I just want you. Yeah. So show me, show me what to do. <laughs> my gosh. But even for that being like your first song, that little three seconds sounded so great. I remember oh. the first song I wrote, it was called driving force. I think I was like 16, 17 and it was with my friend Chris. And, um, it was about God being our driving force, but it didn't sound nearly as awesome as your, as your three seconds did. So that's, that's incredible. But that's the thing. It's like, God gave you this gift. I mean, at 13, 14 to give you that ability, you hear pop songs on the radio and then all of a sudden you start writing pop songs, but they turn up being Christian pop songs. And mm -hmm. that's like this gift that God gave you and you've grown it, you've cultivated it, and you even help other people with their music careers and songwriting. Yeah. I mean, in just really art, art developing, I, I, I'm very, people will come to me with vocal questions or songwriting questions or really just uh, opinions. They really want my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's good because when people have that ear, when people have that gift, it's like, you can't deny it. Um, that's, it's amazing. And so, mm -hmm. so you started writing then, then, um, tell us, give us a little, uh, fast forward up until today of, you know, projects that you've done, um, as, as well as, you know, people that you've, you've written with and just give a little highlight reel. Totally. So, while I was still in high school, I started really pursuing the idea of being a Christian artist. 
And so I was honing in my vocals. I was learning, working with a coach, learning how to sing contemporarily because I had been trained classically. So to sound a little bit more radio like mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. in my tone and in my approach and in my style and techniques. And so I was doing that ever since I was, I think, 16, 17, 18. I was, without really telling the world, I was working on, you know, being radio ready. Wow. So I would go down to Nashville wow. and do some writing trips with some really awesome writers. And in 2015, I released my first EP, which is an extended play. It was a, a four, four song EP and it was titled All the Way. And that song, All the Way, was the very first song I ever wrote in Nashville. And the song was all about, you know, where am I going? <laughs> if you ever hear that song, it's, you know, where, where am I going? Wish you'd come, wish you'd come, wish you'd show me. So it's very similar to. Mm. Now that now that I'm like thinking about it, now I'm very similar to the exact same feelings that I was having as a 13 year old, yeah. except I was I was 17 at that time, 16, 17. And I wanted Jesus to say, OK, am I where am I headed next? Am I going into college? Am I going to just completely pursue the music industry without, uh, with, you know, without going to college and just really learning a trade yeah. per se? And um, I was just feeling lost because I was, I'm young for my grade, but I was getting ready to graduate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but Jesus, Jesus has a way of, of working through all things and definitely making them for our good. Yeah. So uh, that song ended up a, a, a year later winning a grand prize in an international um, John Lennon songwriting competition. Incredible. And then it moved. I know, I know. And then it also ended up moving on to be one of the 12 Lennon Award winners out of that whole competition. Wow. Yeah, it was it was just crazy because I actually remember I was feeling pretty low and I'm like, Lord, I'm so confused. I didn't I, I really don't know. Am I doing the right thing? Because I had at that time chosen to just pursue music full time mm-hmm. after I graduated. And I was in a moment of despair when I opened up that email and Jesus it was like Jesus spoke to me. He's like, this is my reminder that you're doing what I want you to do. Wow. <laughs> and it's, it's so important. You know, yeah. obedience to God is really important. And when he's leading you in a certain direction and he provides clarity and peace, you got to go. And mm-hmm. sometimes that's Amen. even turning down other opportunities, which I believe you were accepted to some pretty big uh, music schools. Is that correct? I was. And I had a scholarship at the Jacob School of Music for vocal performance. Wow. And that I mean, that was what I had been working for for four years when I wasn't running, working on my contemporary sound at home and on the side. I was I was competing in competitions and uh, in show choir. And I was I was trying to be the best opera singer that I could be. Wow. And I and, and I and I was my senior year. I was undefeated. Wow. And I. <laughs> yeah, that was that was like my dream. That was all I wanted. <laughs> Incredible. So my year, it was it was insane. It was insane. I I was undefeated in all of the competitions that we did, and then um, I, I auditioned to the biggest music school that I had been training to get into, and then I got in with a scholarship. And then Jesus told me after I had had my graduation party, after I had told everyone I was going, that He didn't want me to go. Really? Yeah. <laughs> But what did that, what was that that like? Like what, what gave you that direction specifically? I had, I had a, it was kind of like a, just a moment of clarity. Mm. It was like, I, I had been piling up all of these, what if, what if, what if into these dark clouds. Mm. And then I had a phone call that just pierced my heart about, the idea of, okay, pursuing Christian music, this is what you need to do. Like, if this is what you want, this is what you really should be doing. Mm. And it, it made sense to me. Like, if, if I wanted to sing for Jesus and I wanted to travel and I wanted to sing more contemporarily, um, my dream wasn't to sing opera and travel the world. That wasn't my dream. My dream was to sing for Jesus. And so it was kind of like a moment where I'm like, oh, I know what I have to do. Right. It wasn't us. Oh, Jesus, are you sure? It was a, yup, that phone call was the the answer. That was, that was it. And I had peace, but also was a little nervous because I had to tell my parents. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, but, but they were so supportive and I mean, the rest is kind of history. 
Incredible. Yeah. Now you're a, a full-time, I like to call you a music missionary, you know, going out, <laughs> um, spreading the gospel. We met, um, this past year at an event in Pennsylvania, Abbey Fest. That was so awesome. And, uh, mm-hmm. been, been working together ever since. I'm so grateful to collaborate with you and, and meet people like you that not only are super passionate about sharing the gospel that actually live it and, and know Christ, but you actually create at a super high level. Both of us are pretty much like perfectionists. We want to do great stuff for Jesus. And you even warn me sometimes like, you know, Joe, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to make sure we get the best, you know, we go back and forth on vocals <laughs> and stuff like that. And, and so it's super exciting to, because, you know, iron sharpens iron. We can help each other grow as artists, as disciples and and that's super important. And you know that you're releasing this new album, Who I Am. Tell us a little bit about it. Awesome. So Who I Am is really this journey of my 18, 19, really 19, 20 year old self coming into the early 20s and trying to understand, okay, I, I think I know who I am, but I don't really know who I am. And it's, it's like, it's, it's the theme that we kind of talked about at the beginning where um, I was still understanding my identity in Christ. I already knew who Christ was and I loved him and he's a huge part of my life, but I didn't understand how, what, what that meant for the day to day in my life, in my heart as a, as a young 20 year old. Mm, mm. And I thought that that's something that everyone relates to. Everyone has to go on a journey of self discovery. Yeah, And that's really what this album is about. I was still healing from a lot of wounds that happened. I mean, obviously in high school, I was, I was still trying to overcome a lot of the lies that I started to believe about myself yeah. that Satan had, had literally thrust into my face yeah. over and over and over. And that's what this album is about, is overcoming those lies and fearlessly accepting the identity that we have in Christ. Come on preach let's go that's amazing i can't can't wait to listen to it in in its entirety and uh make sure to stay tuned because break it down we're gonna be breaking down a couple of your tracks i'm super excited about that um but i I, here's a fun question what's the one thing most people don't know about you oh wow one thing that most people don't know about me is i've always wanted to be a voice actor for like animation (laughs) really what would be what would be your ideal like movie what would like maybe a movie in the past that you was like oh I, I i definitely want to do something like that oh wow okay well if it wasn't frozen i wanted to play elsa <laughs> wow amazing <laughs> no, no, no. If, yeah if it wasn't that then probably just some some sort of cartoon that you'd find on on you know cable or what not about it <laughs> amazing well i believe it in jesus name you have a great voice for that that'd be fantastic oh thanks so um a lot of people listen um, we're praying that when people listen to the Mission Driven Podcast, that they, they receive God's word, that they're inspired, that they're sent forth on their mission. So if you could speak to the world at one time, like right now, what would you tell them? Hmm. Jesus said, fear of nothing. Do not worry. Like, the, I can't express how many times when I start getting stressed out, how just literally listening to Jesus' voice saying, worry of nothing, worry of nothing. It's, it's such a relaxing, calming truth. So especially in this time of, of, of crisis, especially in this time of confusion and fear, worry of nothing. Wow. Yeah. Do not be anxious about anything. Like it's, it's so important. And yeah, it, it does put you to rest. It is like, oh, you're right. God's in control. God's got this. And we, ha- <laughs> we have to remind ourselves every day of that um, when it's, we're in the, this new season um, are there any special scripture verses um, that you love or scripture stories um, that uh, have helped you a lot? Mm, definitely. I'd say my favorite verse is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Um, Psalm 37, four. So good. That, and that's probably, yeah, it's so good. I just, it just makes my heart so happy because whenever I get nervous about what if this isn't what I want, what if right. this isn't what I want or uh, it's it's like it doesn't matter because if you're if you're doing what God wants if you're obedient you go back to the obedient thing you will be given the deepest desires of your heart because your heart becomes one with the Lord. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's it's so powerful. I, I, there was another verse that I read recently, and it's um, when you love God, you are fully known by God. Something along those mm. lines. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so so powerful, so nourishing. Um, yeah. But yeah, scripture is so beautiful and every day we got to get into it 
and we got to be encouraged by it because it's alive and it's active. I know that it's had a big impact on my life and so many other people um, that I, I speak to that that love Jesus are really taking time each day um, to be fed by Jesus in the word, which is beautiful. It's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so your mission from God, if you could sum it up in one sentence, we obviously know you're a music missionary. You're super gifted. You have a heart for the Lord. What would you say your mission from God is right now? That no matter where you're at in your life, when you are close with the Lord, you will find so much joy. Powerful. Powerful. That's amazing. Yeah. Joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, it's like mm-hmm. incredible. There I it love is. it. God wants us to be joyful. So we got to sing. We got to dance. We got to praise. And, you know, I've seen you live and, you know, it's it's kind of like a Beyonce, Sasha Fierce thing. Like all of a sudden someone comes out of you and you're like, <laughs> you're singing, you're dancing and it's amazing. I love it. So people can can book you and bring you out to their their churches and schools. How how would they get in, in contact with you? Awesome. Well, I have a website and you can definitely click the contact tab on my website at www.hannahsafermusic.com. And I would love to come out and be a part of your event. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, super, super pumped. I know that you spoke to a couple of schools when we were together in Pennsylvania and, and the kids loved it. That was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And um, can you plug all your, your social media and Spotify and stuff like that so people can find you? Totally. Yep. Let's start with Instagram. Instagram. All right. My handle is at Hannah Safer with an A on the end. So that'd be H-A-N-N-A-H-S-C-H-A-E-S-E-R with an A on the end. And you can find me on Twitter there, uh, Facebook. You can just type in my name and it should come up or you could type in Hannah Schaefer and then there's official at the end if you can't find my, my page name there. But I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I am a new TikToker. Okay. All my TikTok people. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> it's Hannah Safer Music on TikTok. Okay. Fantastic. And then and Spotify, then, you got a lot of streams out there. How do we find you on Spotify? Yeah, you just you just type in my name. Type in my name on any any social media platform, any streaming platform, Apple Music, Spotify, it, it's there. I'm there. Amazing. Pumped. I'm pumped. Uh, we're going to do some rapid fire questions right now. A lot of fun um, just to, to, to break the ice a bit towards the end of our conversation here. Um, so here we go. Rapid fire. Hannah Schaefer, the first thing that comes to mind, just spit it out. Here we go. Favorite flavor ice cream. Chocolate chip cookie dough. Favorite color. Blue. Musical artist you admire. Katy Perry. Favorite movie ever. Ah, that's a hard one. Um, right now, it. Frozen too. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Book or books that you've read that have greatly impacted you? I am blank by Chris Stefanik. What inspires you? Daily, daily scripture and adoration. Favorite TV show? Currently don't have one. Not watching any. It's Lent. Ha. <laughs> if you could have a superhero power, what would it be? Probably levitation. Like I could lift things with my hands. Favorite fruit? Bananas. Life goal? To get to heaven. Finish the sentence. God is magnificent. Well, Hannah, thanks so much for your time today on the Mission Driven Podcast. You are a fearless leader for Jesus, and we're so thankful for you. I want to encourage you to keep going with everything that you're doing. Um, We're praying that God's going to do incredible things in your life. Um, So thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll check in and stay up to date with everything that you're up to. But we'll catch you next on Break It Down, where you're going to talk to us about some tracks off your latest album, Who I Am. All right, Mission Driven Podcast with Hannah Schaefer. Let's go. All right, welcome back to the Mission Driven Podcast. We are joined today by our special guest, Hannah Schaefer. Welcome back to Break It Down. Hey, so happy to be a part of this. Yeah, you know, I love the the whole concept of Break It Down because, you know, sometimes you got to dance, you got to just break it down, you bust a move, but it's also (laughs) cool to like, you know, learn the the backstory of these songs. I always listen to songs. I'm like, where was that artist when they wrote that song? What was that process like? What what was that mm-hmm. lyric? You know, what did that mean? So that's what this whole section is about in the Mission Driven Podcast. Break it down. So uh, we're going to be talking about a couple of your tracks today off your latest album. Um, so uh, tell us the creative process um, in writing a song. What What is that like? I think it's 
different every time. It depends on what type of inspiration hits me right away. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, though, it's, it's really, I, I come up with the hook first. I, hit, okay. I, get, I go straight to that chorus. So um, with, with some of the talks, especially some of the songs that we're going to talk about today, most of them I wrote the chorus first and then filled in, um, you know, the, the rest of the story afterwards. Yeah. Do you have like reference tracks? Like you listen, like, Hey, you know, I'm going to go, um, with this type of tempo or these chords, or, you know, this is something, this is something similar. I want to, to create, um, or does it just come to you? A little bit of both. I definitely, with a lot of the songs, well, actually no, with most, most songs that I have, whenever I'm showing the producer, I'm like, here's my song. This is, this is a song that I think it needs the vibe of, or mm. I really love the synth in this song, or I'll, I'll kind of throw, throw three songs at them <laughs> for them to kind of listen to all of them and see how they can um, really make those sounds their own in my own song. Love it. So cool. So tell us a little bit about the first song we're going to play. It's called wild. Where were you when you wrote it? And what was the whole concept behind it? So I was writing with one of my friends. His name is Chad Sowards, and he's a singer in the group Mass Anthem. And they're actually the group that's featured on that song. So I was just sitting and hanging out with him and just talking, and which most people do. Like most songwriting sessions are therapy sessions, for those of you who don't really know. <laughs> right. Uh, but so I was just kind of explaining to him that I – was in a season where I knew that the Lord was leading me. I was living in Nashville at the time and I knew that, that God wanted me to do music, but I wasn't quite sure what that looked like. And it it almost felt like I was in a season of, of being out in the desert. And so I, I really just wanted to encompass that feeling of no matter what, like I, I know that I'm, I know I'm not alone but I'm going to, I'm going to answer that call. I'm going to answer that call. And and honestly, that's where some of my favorite lyrics from that song came from. And, and, and honestly, I think he was going, but through, through those same feelings as well. It's like, this is what we're called to do. And as creatives, I feel like we're never, ever satisfied. We're mm. very restless beings. Yeah. And I truly believe that that's only as part of our cross to bear because we are, we, we are constantly creating and creation is, a reflection of God's God's goodness and his his beauty so we're constantly seeking beauty and and we are never going to get the fullness of what beauty is until we reach heaven you know what i mean yeah totally so we get we get pieces of beauty here and there and it, and it feeds us enough but it's we're still restless so it's really wild was all about that answering the call even though you don't know what that even means incredible well here's a clip from Hannah Schaefer's song wild check it out you had me thinking i was on cloud nine but no 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 you kept me in the dark with your white lies no no lately i've been living inside of myself living inside of myself you're holding my feet to the ground pushing and pulling me down but nothing you do can keep me from breaking free First time I heard that song, I was like, oh my gosh, this, well, first off, Hannah made this song, number one. Number two, like, this is, this is awesome. Three, it sounds like something you hear on the radio. Four, like, it just bumps, you know, you just feel it. It's a vibe. I love that track. It's so cool. And, and it's, it stands out. I feel like it's different than any other track I've heard. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was kind of the goal with that one is, is it's definitely more of, of an experience. It's yeah <laughs> uh-huh it's like you go on a retreat when you listen to that song it's amazing that's great <laughs> so um this is the title track off your album who i am tell us a little bit about this track all right who i am was i distinctly remember i was sitting 
in my kitchen. I was, my roommates were all at work because I was living in Nashville at the time. I was sitting in the kitchen and I was just actually kind of angry. I was, I was feeling angry. <laughs> and because I had been the past couple of days just slammed with voices saying, you should be doing this. You are this. You are this. Like it was like Satan was just trying so hard to tell me who I was. And remind me that the person that I was in the eyes of God is not worldly good enough. And, <laughs> and so I just remember, I, I threw my notebook down on that table. I sat down and I wrote out how I felt. And I, I wrote, the first beginnings of that song was, I know who I am. You don't get to tell me what my heart feels. Mm. And, wow. and as soon as I wrote that down, I'm like, whew, all right. Cause I'm happy to be in me and, I don't, <laughs> yeah. and then it started lifting a little bit more. And then I realized, no, this is, this is beautiful because I'm finally understanding who I am in the eyes of God, even though I've, I've been through pain, I've been through, and I'm still trying to figure out th this journey. I am who I am. And, and, and I am that person because God made me that way. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. He made you specifically to be you and nobody else. And that's mm -hmm. so, so powerful when you can come to that realization like, oh man, I'm special just the way I am. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. You know, um, that's amazing. So, all right. This is Hannah Schaefer's song, Who I Am. Enjoy. as well totally enjoy it uh I, I can't wait to listen to your whole album it's gonna be so much fun when is it releasing by the way it's releasing friday march 20th of 2020 okay so if you're listening to this right now um it might might already be out which is ex Woo! so exciting um but make sure to to listen to it stream it jam it bump it in the car it's full of hope it's full of jesus full of peace and this next song called filter i was just listening to it this morning and wow it's like uh it's a deep rich anthem for uh the heart of our culture today um tell us a little bit about this song so filter was the last song that i wrote for the album uh i had been going through a season where i was listening to stories of of young really young young women um, and their, their heartache of their, their relationships with themselves, traumatic things that have happened in their lives. Uh, and it, it just like, it moved me, it moved me to tears. And I, I remember I, I just played those chords on the piano when I had a moment alone and I was really just thinking through so all the trauma that, you know, people, people that we know have maybe gone through and made it out and, and, and just, just focusing a little bit on, on, on the pain. And I realized I hadn't really had a lot of that on the album yet. Mm. And as a person who truly is a very, like, I'm a very joyful person mm -hmm. and very happy person. Uh, I believe that it comes only because I've, I've experienced pain. Wow. And I want, and I wanted to make sure that, that there was a little bit of that on my heart, my, like the broken feelings on that on this album because i know that every single person has experienced hurt and pain and i wanted there to be a beautiful a beautiful hope even if it was in the form of like broken fragments yeah 
No, it's beautiful. And it's kind of, it grabs you from the beginning. It sounds different than the other songs we play. It's a bit, would you consider it more of kind of like a ballad? Oh, definitely. It, it's the it's the ballad, and there, it's also the only real acoustic. Besides, I have a a, a, a remix or a acoustic version of one of the other pop songs, but it's the only stripped down song on the album. Wow. Well, love it. Um, let's tune in right now to "Filter" by Hannah Schaefer. Oh, be raw and be real. Don't cover the surface Don't hide your scars Don't hide your heart From me child so worthy and you don't need a filter no you don't need a filter man that song it just it just grabs you when you really listen and sometimes that's important to do a lot of times we listen to music and we like to to vibe to dance to groove but a lot of times the words can really captivate you and bring you to a new place and help you reflect and grow in your life. And I think your music really does that. That's super powerful. Thank you. Well, awesome. Well, we'll be praying for you, for your album launch, um, for future projects to come. I know we have a song together featuring Connor Flanagan called Keep Going. So you definitely want to check that out. That was super, super fun to make. But yeah, so thanks so much for being part of uh, our program today on Break It Down. We'll talk to you later, Hannah. Thank you so much. All right. Peace. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Mission Driven Podcast. Hope you gain something from this episode. I want to give a special thank you to Hannah Schaefer for being our Mission Driven guest. A big shout out to Noel Melendrez for word of the day, Isaiah 12, 2. Love that verse. Hope you enjoyed Break It Down. Feel free to check out Hannah's latest album, Who I Am, now streaming worldwide. There'll be a link in the show description. I want to let you know if you have any questions that you'd like to submit for future episodes, please feel free to email me personally, joe at joemelendrez.com or Go to joemelenders.com forward slash podcast. You can also follow me on all social media at Joe Melendrez. If you like today's episode, please feel free to rate, share, comment, and subscribe. It really helps to get the word out. Shout out to our sponsor, the Be Not Afraid Conference. Y'all got to sign up. So until next time, God loves you and stay mission driven. Peace.